So a couple of months ago, this company called Arrowzoom messaged me. They said to me that they wanted to send me some acoustic foam for my studio, which, as you can see, is now up on the walls. So welcome everyone to episode one of Studio Bits. I don't know if I'm going to keep that title, it's a bit weird, but we'll go with it. So this acoustic foam, not only does it look really nice all around the studio, I've got a little bit behind the camera as well, it serves an amazing purpose as well, because this room is not good for sound reflections. And sound reflections are basically when a bit of audio comes out of speaker and it bounces off around the walls of the room and certain aspects of the audio can appear from behind you if you don't dampen the sound reflections. So this foam helps with all of that. I'm not the biggest expert on acoustics, but I think I've got it in the right place, let's hope so. So when this stuff arrived a couple of weeks ago, I had to unbox it pretty much straight away, otherwise it wouldn't hold its shape quite as well. So I had to get it out of the box. The box was about like, I wanna say about this big for all of this foam, which was kind of ridiculous. So I got to watch it expand over the space of about like two or three days and now I've got it stuck up in the studio, which I think looks really nice. So I figured I'd show you guys a quick time lapse of what it was like putting the actual acoustic foam up on the walls. As you can see, it did take quite a lot of adhesive strips to get this stuff stuck down to the walls properly. I'd say the whole thing took about three hours in total, and as you can see, it turned out looking really nice. So this is the kind of stuff that you would see across pretty much every other YouTuber's office at some point. It's used for dampening sound reflections, as I said. It can be used to dampen the reflections when recording audio, just like I am now, but also for playing back audio out of speakers as well, because these speakers very, very buried in the corner of my room, which kind of makes them not sound as good as they could. This definitely helps out a little bit. Definitely wasn't the easiest thing to put up on the wall. The only reason I say that is because I wanted to have my original Launchpad Pro circuit board in picture frame up there. And then on this side, I wanted to have my silver play button still in the same place. So I kind of had to adapt for those by cutting sections out of about like eight different pieces of acoustic foam and putting them back on the wall and hoping that they would fit before I ran out of acoustic foam. But overall, I think the whole thing looks really nice. It's definitely a really nice addition to the studio. It definitely gives the walls a nice bit of contrast. It gives this whole video a bit of a better look as well, which, you know, is definitely a plus. So now with that up on the walls, I think I'm going to show you guys a quick sound test of what it's like before I had the acoustic foam and what it's like now. So here's the before. There you go. I know it's probably not very perceptible over this little mic, but at the same time, as the listener in this room, it definitely makes such a huge difference. So my inner pyromaniac was also curious, am I gonna be covering my walls with very flammable stuff? So I took one of the spare acoustic pads that I had, took it outside, and I gave it a flame test. And as you can see, it, it does pretty well. It does catch a little bit, but it's not gonna catch on fire like completely and you know, it's not a risk to the room. And also, me being me, I gave it a laser test and that also didn't catch on fire so I think we're good. There you go, that's how I was able to turn this weird little room into a much more professional looking studio using the Arrowzoom acoustic foam. So thanks so much to Arrowzoom for sending that over, really makes the studio look good. Check them out in the link below and I will see you in the next episode of Studio Bits. Thanks for watching guys.